Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome to our daily vlog and this morning we're going to be looking at the subject of Jesus the intercessor, Jesus the intercessor. Um, but firstly what I want to do is just have a look at the subject of uh, intercession or um, the word to intercede, which only appears six times in the whole of the scriptures, which is quite interesting. So a very simple concept, very simple concept uh, to do with interceding. Uh, it's basically um, you've got person A and you've got person B and you need somebody, a middleman. You need somebody in the middleman who's going to talk to person uh, B uh, on, your, on behalf of person A. So there's always three parties. A wants to speak to B and there's a middleman. C, the intercessor. Okay, so let's go to the scriptures in the Old Testament. And uh, we're going to start in Genesis and chapter um, 23. And uh, this is where um, uh, Abraham... He's just lost his wife, Sarah, and he's looking for a burial plot for her because they're in a foreign land. And uh, what he does in, in Genesis uh, and 23 is that he speaks to the Hittite leaders um, and asks them to intercede. He asks them to speak to a third party on his behalf whom he doesn't know um, and asks them to for a plot of land. So we're just going to read a couple of verses, 23 verse 8. He said to them, if you are willing uh, to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephron, son of Zohar, on my behalf, so that he will sell me the cave of Machpelah. And so, very simple, uh, Abraham wants a plot of land uh, to bury Sarah. He doesn't know the owner. He knows the Hittite own leaders do, so he asks them to intercede on his behalf to speak, to be the middleman. OK, so that's the concept. Let's go to um, look at this in a spiritual uh, sense, though. 1 Samuel 2 and verse 25. 1 Samuel 2 and verse 25. So we've seen the concept of intercession. But let's have a look at this. That was a very physical concept. Let's have a look at this in, a spirit, in the spiritual realm. And in 1 Samuel 2 and uh, verse 25, we get a, um, the situation where Eli the priest... He's, he's devastated with his sons. His sons are wicked. They haven't uh, followed his ways. They haven't followed in the ways of the Lord. And this is what he says to them. Let's jump in at verse 22. 1 Samuel 2, verse 22. Now Eli, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. So he said to them, why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about such wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, the report I hear spreading among the Lord's people is not good. If one person sins against another, God may mediate for the offender. But if anyone sins against the Lord, who will intercede for them? If anyone sins against the Lord, who will intercede for them? Let's leave that there for now. But that is such a key phrase. The third time the word intercede appears in the scriptures is in 1 Samuel and chapter 7 and verse 5. And here we have uh, Samuel as a, as a grown man now uh, acting, as, uh, uh, acting as a priest. But this is fascinating because here we have Samuel uh, not interceding on behalf of an individual person, but he's interceding on behalf of uh, a whole nation. 1 Samuel 7 verse 5, Samuel said, Assemble all Israel at Mizpah, and I will intercede with the Lord for you. They're turned away from God, but uh, here we have them turning towards God, and uh, Samuel is saying, look, I am going to stand in the gap. I'm going to be the middleman between you, uh, the nation of Israel, and your God. And then finally in the Old Testament, uh, we get this uh, wonderful uh, account in 1 Kings 13 and verse 6 of a, a man of God. He's a nameless man of God. Hallelujah. But the Lord knows him. And uh, it says this. The king said to the man of God, intercede with the Lord. Uh, uh, the, the king said, intercede with the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God interceded with the Lord. He asked the Lord. And the king's hand was restored and became as it was before. So here we have um, a, a man of God praying to the Lord, asking for the healing of this man's hand. And he, and he does. He, he, he gets healed. OK, so that's a really good ground rules, as it were, for intercession. 
But what is fascinating is that when we come to the New Testament, there are only two occasions when the word intercede is used. The first time it's used is in relation to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And the second time it's used is when it's referring to the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus intercedes for us. But their intercession uh, are for different things. So firstly, in Romans 8, we get uh, the Holy Spirit uh, as our intercessor. Um, but this is, he doesn't in, this is what he intercedes for. Romans 8, verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And then it goes on to say, um, that he uh, intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Hallelujah. You know those times when we just don't know what to pray for or how to pray and we just think our words are, are just going into fresh air, as it were? Well, maybe we just need to call on, on, on the name of, uh, of, of the Lord through the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, would you intercede on our behalf? Would you be our middleman before God the Father and pray in accordance with the will of God. Hallelujah. Now sometimes this is, I think this is, is, is referring to those who have the gift of tongues and, and it's the groans of the Spirit. But, but it's not just that. Um, this is the Holy Spirit of God being the middleman, standing in the gap, um, praying in accordance with God's will and purposes. And that is so powerful because we know that when we pray in accordance with God's plan and purposes, it's ours. It's done. It's in the bag. So here we have the Holy Spirit interceding on behalf of God's people in prayer. And finally, let's go to um, uh, Hebrews and we see how the Lord Jesus um, is referred to as our intercessor, the one who intercedes uh, for us. Hebrews, where are we? Hebrews and chapter 7 and verse 25, and it says this. Verse 23. Now there have been many of these priests, uh, those priests since death, prevented them from continuing in office. Samuel was a priest. He's died. He's no longer in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit intercedes for us in relation to praying. But here we have the Lord Jesus who went to the cross for us. He intercedes for us in regards to our sin. What I love about this is the word permanent, permanent. Hallelujah. There are many things in life that are not permanent. We have found through COVID and everything else that, that, that life has become quite temporary, hasn't it? For many, many people, health has become temporary. A good health has become a temporary thing. Financial um, uh, stability for many has become a temporary thing. But God's forgiveness um, is permanent. It is permanent because he forever lives to intercede for us. Let me just read the verses that follow. Such a high priest, Jesus, truly meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. And like the other high priest, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. Hallelujah. Jesus intercedes for us. He intercedes for you and he intercedes for me. And because it is a permanent priesthood, we are permanently forgiven because he permanently intercedes for us. Hallelujah. Let's pray together and give thanks to God this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for sending the Lord Jesus. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you that they both intercede for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you intercede for us. You're the middleman when we're just not sure how to pray in accordance with your will. Lord, teach us to call upon you when we just aren't sure how to pray. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that your death on the cross has caused you to be 
uh, has, has, has caused you to be in that place of high priest with a permanent priesthood. Hallelujah. That we might be permanently forgiven because you forever stand as the middleman uh, and you intercede for us before the Father. Oh, we're so grateful this morning. Lord. We're so grateful. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a good day, everyone. God bless. Take care.